happened to us, Juan Moa? He just became father, right? Congratulations. Tell us more. How did it go? It was a, a, a relevant project. <laughs> <laughs> it was, well, fine, fine. It was fine. It was a bit, a bit strange. The old environment with all the the measures for the protection and so on. But finally, everything okay. We're at home. The baby is sleeping. So good news. <laughs> <laughs> and the mother is, is is really well. So more than happy. What's the name? Luz. Luz, yeah, you sound very nice, Luz. That's what we need nowadays, huh? Yeah, Luz is light in English. Mm. Wow. Nice, thank you. Diana, how are you? <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. Uh, all is well here. Uh, we got a little anxiety in the country as a whole. It just means that we really need to get to work with more testing. Um, I think that's obvious to everybody. So we're running out of time. They're having more anxiety build up before we get to the place we need to be before we can reopen the society safely. Uh, but all is well, everything's the same. I'm still locked up in the house in Bodega Bay, but probably no better place to be. <laughs> <laughs> nice, good to hear. Ron, how are you? Good, my friend. Very, very good. Uh, all is well here in Seattle. Um, and uh, we have we have the hospital that's right near our home is the hospital that's been at ground zero uh, where the first patients were taken. And so that those uh, health care workers are tired, um, but, uh, but in good spirits. My wife and I um, are uh, organizing uh, fundraisers to bring them food. And so we get to go always drop off meals for them um, and help them with grocery shopping. And um, they're incredibly good spirits for the, for the healthcare workers that have been at this the longest. They're remarkably resilient and caring. It's really beautiful to see. Nice. But I think we're, I think in Seattle, we're sort of, I think people believe we're past the worst of it for our city. Mm -hmm. um, I think everybody's very afraid of declaring premature victory and doing something stupid, but uh, you know, we're, we're humans. We want to go back to what we know. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Marcello. How are you? Uh, good. Thanks. Uh, here in Austria, in Vienna, um, the situation is starting to relax. Uh, so um, they reopened less essential shop, flower shop, for example. And yesterday was interesting. I went out for a walk and everybody had, now everybody's wearing masks. So or, uh, I see with Austrian discipline, everybody follows the rule. Mm -hmm. And though it was so interesting to see people, I felt alive uh, outside after a long time. Um, those little things, seeing a flower shop open or where you can buy chocolate or whatever, they make the whole difference. So there's kind of good spirit here, uh, but at the same time, people are still extremely cautious. I think that's a little bit the situation here. Okay. And Golcek, how are you? Hi, Antonio. Hi, everybody. Um, we are in lockdown. Interestingly, Turkey is following a different strategy. Uh, during the weekdays, we can't. We are allowed to go out uh, if you are between the age twenty to sixty-five. So, anyone below twenty or above sixty-five are in lockdown the whole time. Uh, but at the weekends, uh, we are at home. So I think um, the government must have realized that now with the weather getting better, uh, people would have liked to go out uh, at the weekends. But um, um, well, they're saying that in a couple of weeks time, we're going to be reaching the peak and then um, hopefully things will be better. So fingers crossed. Okay, thank you. Great, great to see you. Thank you for making the time. There's a few other people who are trying to join, but I want to stick to the timelines. Today, what I wanted to briefly touch base on all the, <clears throat> all the working groups. How, how are we doing? Um, so I've asked uh, uh, each group to just share for three minutes so that we I need to be strict on the timing so that we can have a few questions. Um, some of the 10 initiatives I'll share with you back again, the ones that we kind of narrowed down. 
uh, have not taken much traction. So the idea would be to park them and focus on the five, six that you see building momentum and maybe invite other people to join. <coughs> and so it's just a general update and, and a bit of brainstorming and, and sharing. That will be the main part of the day, of the one hour. And the other thing I'm, I'm, I wanted to share with you is, I, I've, uh, from what I've seen, there's a lot of good intentions from all the groups, but we're still in a very theoretical um, dialogue. Um, and, and I find it difficult to reach tangible things, not because we're not smart, it's just because we're kind of knowledge workers. And I thought that we could eventually use some of the calls to invite people that we know. Um, I, I know a person here close by that has a bar. Um, and they come here and they will share their problem. Um, of course, they need to speak English. Present, well, I have this shop and I'm, I'm not having revenues. And we would brainstorm with that person around the problem uh, solutions. So that would become maybe very tangible for one person. But that way we could create a bit of also uh, some bottom up momentum. But let's leave that for a uh, second half of the the, the hour just wanted to share it with you um, which is kind of a bit of the thinking I've been doing so far so I'll, I'll bring some slides here and I'll ask um, <coughs> the, the team leader or the coordinator to start sharing if you can and if you are present I know Emma was about to join so I hope you see my slides I need to put them a bit bigger I know um, let me see if I can put this so that everybody sees. So the first um, idea, the network of networks, that one uh, led by Anka um, is not picking up and there's nothing wrong about anybody. It's just we didn't see that as a priority to work on. But the next one, uh, know-how and education. Now, I know Emma has been quite active, so Hi Emma, thank you for joining us. And um, so can you just share with the group, uh, where are you? What, what would be the one or two things that you're going to focus? Um, uh, we need to be just short on the timing, three minutes or so, uh, but thank you Emma. Can you um, let me share my screen please? Of course, of course. Thank you. Um, so like you, uh, one of the things that I found is that um, we all, it's actually interesting to try and get quite high level at uh, quite low level because people seem to focus on the high level stuff. So what I've done with my team is tried to get um, a little bit in the lower level of detail. So we now have um, an objective that we're all happy with. So to provide um, that, provide how tech support tailored to the needs of the end user that provide accessible and digestible wisdom, which is curated across industries and borders. And some of the key words that are digestible. There's so much out there around technology that the whole point of our work stream, we believe, is to make it clear for people. So because we all have lots of really great big ideas, um, what we then did is broke it down into a number of more tangible activities. And you can see what I've then done, the, I've given everything an ID and it's now with the team to kind of say which one of these would they like to lead or get involved in. So I'm getting that feedback to try and make it a little bit more tangible and to be able to actually scope out these activities. Um, so uh, we have kind of six streams of work. Some will, depending on people who want to get involved or want to lead, might go by the wayside, might go on hold right now, but this will allow me to kind of sanitize it down a little bit. So in terms of basic support, we've got guidance around security. Most of you will have seen all of the security issues around Zoom and all of that. So giving people some real tangible, this is how you can be safe online, I think is a really good idea. We focus specifically on Zoom uh, because it has exploded over the last few weeks. Um, we might end up doing more. And linked very closely to that is the business stream, which is around giving businesses the, the information to manage everything that people are downloading at home on their own. Um, so at the moment we have work laptops, everybody's downloading all sorts of tech and businesses need some practical tips on hosting virtual meetings, what the, you know, bit of a gap analysis on what these systems are. 
Um, in terms of young people, we started to look at how young people can be safe online because they're using more now than they have before. Um, so we've, again, we've kind of picked up a few uh, immediately uh, on maybe giving people ideas on rather than just looking at videos of cats um, is to actually give them some ideas, some strategies for spreading good instead. Um, and also one of the key things that is happening at the moment is we're seeing lots of people who are without jobs right now. So doing some social media type stuff, some accessible, digestible stuff about how we can get help uh, to, out to people who are in that situation. So maybe getting people back on the job market, maybe who are starting that journey. Um, then we've got some stuff um, more targeted. I want to say older people, but that that's really unfair because there are people who are unfamiliar, but they were a particular area for the team that they wanted to focus is some of us have parents and grandparents in homes in care homes who have no access um, so we were trying to think of ideas of how we can make it easy for people to reach other people but without having the technology so my husband is a doctor and one of the things he said because he looks after a care home is ever some of the staff will have ipads and phones so maybe it's actually reaching out and partnering with the care home so that they can almost create a schedule for people to be able to talk to their families and things like that. Um, in a future stream, we're kind of looking more at getting businesses ready for the future. So transformation guidance, everybody's digital transformation has massively accelerated. Um, so giving them some guidance around what that actually means, getting PMOs and project managers ready um, as well. So bringing information together about what the future might look like, uh, and some tactical support. So if you think about white papers, but from a standard operating procedures perspective on how to sanitize and drill down on the technology once we're all back at work so that they can start to build a bit of a roadmap of what does all this technology do? What are we using it for? How are we going to roll it out in a wider sense? So that businesses can get, this is a basic standard operating procedure. 80% will probably work for you. If you change the 20%, it will get you up and running a bit quicker. And then we added like an overall. So we believe that we have we have a responsibility in the know-how area to kind of bring stuff together to be integrators. So everything that's happening across all the work streams is get the papers out, get the findings, the things that we're doing and learning along the way. And we also have toyed with developing a mentoring scheme um, so people can get help one-to-one, -one, exactly like you were just saying, Antonio. And we know that there are other teams who are going to potentially be doing this kind of thing. So I think that might be more of a holistic world in crisis activity, but something that we definitely want to plug into. So in terms of our next steps, the guys are filling in a survey to tell me um, who wants to lead, who wants to uh, help uh, in the work streams. That will sanitize down a lot of these activities. I'm hoping some of them will go away or be placed on hold. And then we're going to start to scope them out. So um, I'm not sure why this is not working. So start to scope them out in project management style. So what is it that we're planning to do? What are we not planning to do? Are there external parties, bodies that we need to potentially get involved that we need to consider? What's the benefit? Why are we doing it? Are we doing it because it's my good idea or because it's actually going to bring something? And I've used the portfolio kind of um, three P's of sustainability. So people, profit and planet as to where we should be focusing on everything if it doesn't hit at least one or two of those we need to question why we want to spend time with it given that we're all volunteers um, and then we can at least start to bring it down and then hopefully next week we can say to you this is what we're going to focus on over the next few weeks so that's where we are <laughs> wow very impressive it's like um it's yeah. management <laughs> crazy <laughs> uh, we started like three weeks ago or two and um, wow and it's on top of everything so <clears throat> let me i think maybe for the running of this session let's go through all the ideas first so that we ensure everybody presents and then we come back okay. to questions if there's anything on to add to to you emma thank you okay. thank you for your the work and the team no uh, worries <laughs> Let me go to the next one. It was Creative Coalition. Diana, can you, in three minutes, tell us where you are and what will be the focus? Okay, first I want to thank my team. Uh, what I'm going to share with you 
all is a result of the input from my team, uh, Graham, Lori, uh, Sarah, uh, some input from Rosina, help, thank you, Marcello, for your help, and Yuhan as well, and the coordination with two other teams, Paulus and Emma's. Um, and I, so I see this, uh, what I'm going to show you as a predecessor to the business and strategy team, because we're, I'm about to talk to you about, uh, consider um, as a prerequisite, or in other words, uh, what do we need to do to get uh, people back into society safely uh, so we can simmer or um, lessen the anxiety that we're seeing starting to take place. Uh, and then we can uh, better talk about uh, business strategies uh, to once we reopen. So if I could share the, my screen with you. You can do, okay. thank you, Dan. Okay, so what I, uh, the, uh, this, all of the files, if you need more information, more in detail, uh, this is uh, come together from some files that have been submitted from members of my team. And uh, so in that file, uh, primarily is the, the, the Forbes uh, article, uh, where they're tracking all of the manufacturers that have retooled for, uh, for uh, testing and for PPEs and the such. So we know those things are on the horizon. Uh, my assumption is that where we had a shortage uh, now, uh, because everybody jumped on start making all of the same things, at some point just in the horizon around the corner, we'll probably have an oversupply. So this is based on the assumption that we will have at least uh, a adequate supply. So what, what this is, is a shipping container and uh, it would be modified to be like an office, like the bottom picture here. Uh, very simple, just shelving basically, but it would be equipped with uh, uh, electricity and plumbing so people can wash their hands and the Wi-Fi. Uh, the container would, uh, the contents of the container and the advantage of preloading them is so that we could have a drop-in place, community-based drive-through testing so the contents of the container would be three station tents, computers, printers, and nice uh, routers, PPEs, signs, forms, uh, and biohazard disposal, and also the training for offloading the, the uh, tent or for setting it up and for uh, uh, test site behavior. Uh, the strategy, uh, the vision is to design and assemble preloaded containers so that they are stored, dry stored, and ready to go once the testing kits are available. And see that as an advantage because uh, one, what we're struggling with in the United States is uh, when it came to PPEs and uh, ventilators, were, that all of the states were uh, per, trying to procure these things singularly and bumping into each other and driving the prices up. And then on top of that, we had the federal government jump into it and just create a total chaos and nothing much was accomplished. So the idea here is to centralize everything so that, um, uh, and then to, to de deploy these uh, containers that are ready to go. And then once the containers are offloaded with the contents, they become uh, the, the station office, the uh, test site office. Um, uh, let's see, the, it, uh, the, also the vision is to facilitate global testing with the objective of identifying people with antibody presence uh, so that they can reopen society uh, without fear of a resurgence. Um, also an advantage of the, the uh, uh, ready to go or preloaded container is it provides uh, close in time or simultaneous testing so we can get uh, a speedy, broad assessment of where we are with regards to the disease and, uh, and uh, facilitate um, a quicker recovery, both health, uh, as far as health and uh, economics. Um, Diana, because I need to keep it short, in one minute, what will be your role in these containers? And what will be the cost of such containers? Or is something you need to investigate? Absolutely. I am looking at the cost now, uh, starting with the people who uh, created that office thing. I think that is pretty close to what would be needed. Uh, so I'm looking at cost, but there's just a couple other things that I want to share with you. Am I too close to my three minutes already? 
Yeah, but you take one more minute if you can. Okay. All right. So, um, so basically, we just need to identify uh, some, to some extent, I've identified the requirements in the scope, uh, and we just need to uh, work on the design uh, efficacy and the deployment. Uh, these would be the requirements, which starts with a modified shipping container. And here's the scope. We're, we're not actually the uh, testers, uh, but we're just uh, setting the, uh, storing these containers ready to load and deploying them based on a mapping of, uh, of uh, population density and vulnerability. Uh, we would provide uh, enhanced training. But basically, this is already done by a group called Verily, the testing and, uh, and its association with the uh, community health uh, agencies. That part's already done. All we're doing is putting the infrastructure in place and being able to drop those containers where they're needed. So once the tests are available, we can start testing uh, a lot of people at the same time. Here's what I have in terms of some numbers. Based on a population of 325 million people in the United States, and, and uh, on the assumption that a container could service 100,000 people. In the United States, we would need 3,250 containers. Uh, based on uh, the report from Verily, they were able to process people through uh, uh, in 10 minutes. And that's what the swabbing, uh, we're looking at more rapid testing coming around the corner, including the antibody testing, which is a fingerprint, a uh, finger prick, so I'm pretty comfortable that these numbers are pretty close. Um, so we're looking at processing 10, 10 people per every 10 minutes. Um, so, uh, so basically one person per minute. So if the sites are open for 10 hours, uh, that's 600 minutes or 600 people per day. And uh, so how many people with 100,000 people target? Uh, we're able to do 600 people. It would take like 167 to 200 days with one container, six or seven months to process that population uh, in the United States, the entire population. So as we add more containers to service 100,000 people, we can do it in less time. So we, even with two containers per 100,000 people, we can process, we can test everybody and four to five months and be back to work safely. Here are the partners that I think we need so far. Um, they would include Google uh, and uh, Apple because they have that uh, uh, contact testing. So we need to coordinate with them. Uh, and here's what I think I need as far as a project plan, which would include some of the groups that I've already been working with. Uh, uh, communication, cultural management, if we do it globally, we definitely need to ramp up the, the training. Uh, we need a deployment mapping based on high density, uh, and we d definitely need to determine the design and cost. Not there yet, but close. We need to do business analysis and identify all the stakeholders and begin to make contact with them. That's all I have. I hope I did it wow. close three minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. This is so exciting, very concrete, and um, yeah, I saw Ron said something around drop a box also moving uh, something similar. So there might be similar initiatives that we can connect to. So thank you, Ron. Um, let, let's do this. If I could add, uh, Antonio, yeah. I, I, I did see in the UK where they're using the container for mini hospitals. So rather than the tents like you might find in our Central Park in New York, uh, where they used uh, tents and that kind of thing, they're using them and putting them close to hospitals for overflow. Not quite the same thing. We're just talking about uh, uh, um, we're talking about infrastructure readiness. So when the tests are complete, we're ready to go. Thank Great. you. Wow, oh, that could be so tangible. Very nice. Thank you, Ole. Can you go next? Also, uh, just high level. Where are you on the coaching? Yes. Uh, hi to all. Thank you, Antonia. We are, or oh, say we are not very far, to be honest. Uh, great job. I got a ranks on board. And probably sir, I would be looking to collaborate as well with Robert Azaniro, right? Uh, so uh, we will talk, uh, we will have a Zoom conversation probably like Tuesday, Wednesday together finalizing the things because we discussed quite well over the last session we would so we have like visionary leadership and recovery leadership 
two subjects, we will choose which one would be most critical and to whom we could offer and which terms, pro bono, free of charge, or whatever, who would support us to get as wide as possible. At the same time, already doing those things, uh, on, like personally, on my side, I will have a big webinar on the 28th of April, on the 14th of May, helping people with to recover this. And plus I do already weekly webinars in Russia, in Russian language. So helping people to get out of these troubles. But the idea at the moment, we have a general understanding. It's a matter to get the things together and wrap it. I think by end of next week, we'll, we'll, we'll bake it. We'll bake it. Not far, but almost there. Okay, thank you, Oleg. I think the challenge is how can we be different than all these uh, initiatives with other coaches and executive coaches? Exactly. Therefore, uh, the topics or subjects are quite unique. A vision leadership, no one could offer it in a proper way. As you know, you actually have my new project in your hands and you know, I got it as a business tool, right? Which I would be giving out. That might be completely, but in a good sense. And recovery leadership, because I've been through this, oh, you know, quite a few tough crises in my life, so I know how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. Not many people could share that experience. No. Thank you, Oleg. Therefore, it is some kind of a unique product. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, Oleg. Next, you. Uh, we have one mind, Terry, on the business model, also quite some activity going there and, and nice, very interesting. And Marcello, I think is part of that coordination. So who start, Juanma? Uh, no, Terry it, it, it will start. be Terry. Terry, okay, perfect, Terry, welcome. I want to, thank you, Antonio, I want to thank you again for including me in this great group. Uh, this is exciting work that we're about to embark on. And uh, it's very timely for my company as too, because all four divisions are working on some form of this just prior to COVID. So it's very interesting. And uh, I want to start out with uh, this business strategies and models group uh, having a combined vision. And that vision is to help uh, small and medium enterprises move from survive to thrive. And what does that mean? That means right now, as these uh, companies come out, small and medium businesses come out of this uh, crisis worldwide, uh, first is survival mode, and um, Marcello is going to follow up with me. I'm going to give a lot of time to him because his part of it is much bigger. So we are helping SMEs move from strive to thrive, survive to thrive. Marcello, please. Yes. So we tried uh, to um, do a small journey. We really tried to feel the vision and live the vision. So. Um, uh, we are one year, this is a small story that may help us, all of us, to feel what we want to achieve with this vision. So we're now all together, if you stay with me, step into the shoes of somebody, a small, a small and um, um, mid-sized entrepreneur, let's say it's Giovanni, an Italian ice cream owner with free shops. It's one year after today, the vaccine was already found, and Giovanni remembers uh, what happened a year ago, where through the group of World in Crisis, he was reached out to through the local champion of the Italian chapter, um, basically offering a service that is a, a portal with all of the information, basically with a, with a sort of questions and answer on, on how to assess the current status of his business. Uh, Giovanni had very fundamental issues because he had acquired the third shop. He had two ice cream shops. He acquired the third. Uh, so he was financially exposed. He didn't know what to do on that front. So he needed financial advice. Uh, he also had this uh, 15 plus uh, workforce for the three shops. Uh, and not only was this hard to manage in terms of the economics, but also uh, psychologically, uh, the fact, the sense of responsibility. And, um, and then he also was trying to understand what to do with the new, with the new way to do business. He has thought, uh, maybe I can deliver 
uh, ice cream home, but it's summer and they're gonna melt. And he had all of these sort of ideas that he didn't know where to stand. So um, he finally was able to be reached out, um, not only in a portal, but also with dedicated consultancy in 10 minute slots through the network. And he was able to move from, uh, from survive to thrive and uh, it's a happy hand. So Juanma, how did this all happen? Okay, uh, first we have uh, based all our uh, approach uh, on the results of the, of the poll. We, we can share afterwards because it's too long, but we will uh, share with you. Uh, but we focus on uh, speeding up the, the delivery of real and ready for use uh, sector cases. Okay, so taking this into account and also taking advantage of the knowledge in this network, uh, we have defined the use of simple but, uh, but useful and uh, well-known tools as, for example, uh, the Canvas for uh, business model generation or uh, the matrix uh, based on uh, uh, uncertainties that Rita McGrath uh, shared in the last meeting. So, for example, based on those two uh, elements, we can define, uh, in a real case, we can define the, the canvas as it is. We can apply the matrix to know the main uncertainties that is facing and the scenarios, and we can define one, two, or three canvas as it should be. So we can deliver real analysis of real cases uh, uh, in, in each case. How we do this? Iterations. We want to do it, depending on the people we have, one to three per week. So if we have a powerful group, we can do a three. Perhaps if we have a smaller group, it can be one. But we can iterate and deliver, iterate and deliver, and focus on those sectors that we uh, in the group and the whole group uh, prioritize. And uh, finally, uh, well, uh, we think that this is something that uh, should be leveraged by the, the contacts we have in these sectors, every one of us, to, to take advantage of that and in our experience of, on, on these sectors. So we can provide real usage, uh, uh, ready for use uh, patterns in order to benchmark uh, sectors. So, uh, well, would you like to help us uh, make SMEs uh, more uh, more near from survive to thrive. Nice. Well Are done. Are these guys huh? exciting? Yeah, very exciting. I want more. <laughs> Next week, we're going to have some matrix, just so you got an idea. Next week, we're going to have some matrix. Wow. And it's time for us to bring in the group as a whole. There are somewhere around 38 people who are interested in this. Now it's time to kind of bring them in and, and, uh, we have built a basic matrix, and now we can bring in, uh, you know, people to to become involved. It's it's very exciting work. Yeah, we have very colorful figures, but not to show here. <laughs> not ready yet. And uh, we we have some connection with Alex and Eve, um, so eventually we can get them into one of the calls when we it touch be, on that. It will be very very nice. Yeah. Thank you very wow. This is uh, great to see some big steps here. One thing that you mentioned, Terry, I wanted to propose to each group uh, to organize a session if you can, not just with your group, but every invite everybody so that there's more time than just here. It's just five minutes. There's, but if you have the time next week or so, or the week after to say, well, today we do a general session for everybody to join us and go deeper into these areas, Diana, and the, then I think that would be a nice way to, um, you take the lead and, and we'll join us as uh, yes. guests to, to, to provide more and focus on your topic. This is- Yes, absolutely. Diana will definitely be involved. We'll figure yeah. out how to get her in there because she connected a lot of what we're doing. We're, exactly. we're, we're already moving into intersection. I yeah. love it. It's very exciting. Emma, Emma too with her, Let's move, so I want to get through all the others. Uh, I know Paula is there as well on the cultural communication, huge amount of work there. So there was one 
stream call tenders follow up. That one is park. Uh, we don't have the capacity and there was nobody. The next one was cultural communication. So Paula, if you can brief us where you are um, in two, three minutes, uh, would be great. Thank you, Paula. No, oh, thank you. Sorry for the uh, delay in joining. I had uh, some unexpected things, but as is the case during this, uh, these unexpected times, you just have to roll with what you get. Um, I have a couple of slides and uh, just uh, some links that we can go through so you can think of, see our thought process so far in terms of um, the two main strands, which are communications and cultures. Um, and uh, keeping in mind that they're linked um, with the interculturality strand. So just uh, bear with me for a moment. I'll just pull it up right now. There's that and that. Uh, so I'm just gonna share my screen. Just one moment, please. Okay. I'm just waiting for it to appear on my screen to make sure that you can see it. There we go. Okay. Everybody see that? No, yeah, it's gone. Sorry, it, can, can everybody see what, what I just shared or, or no? Not yet, no. Okay. okay. Let's just, that's wrong. Hmm. One second, please. There we go. Well, you Can you see it now? No, not yet. It's gray somehow. It gets stuck. Okay. Let me just, um, you know what? It's okay. I have, uh, I have something else that I'm going to share instead. Uh, it'll be a, there we go instead. Let's do that. Let me share. <laughs> Does it want to work? No, when you're on the spotlight, it doesn't work, you know. Oh, uh, uh, well. <laughs> well done. Let's just see what I can do. No. Is it no. working now? Yeah. Yes, perfect. Okay, all right. So um, let's just start from the beginning. Yeah, <laughs> my goodness. Uh, so uh, what um, what we would like to do, including the, the idea of interculturality. So, um, there's a project which is called Informable, Informable app with a group yet, that'll be for next group. Um, we have discussed translate uh, Translators Without Borders, as well as um, I'm having a, a special speaker come through for us. He's um, a PhD and he has a specialized and gives um, courses on interculturality through his intercultural competency advantage program um, through our cross cultural learner center. He does worldwide as well. Um, uh, another uh, another specific app that I thought was a pretty brilliant app that allows people to uh, communicate across cultures and across borders virtually just with the help of their of their cell phone is uh, Targimli, which is it translates into translating for humanity or I translate for humanity. Um, and what it does is, and I'll explain in a in a, in a moment, is uh, it allows people who are in need, regardless of where they are, to um, you know, download this app onto their phone or access an agency that has their mobile phone. Um, and then uh, provide instantaneous that they need with regard to lack of information. And uh, many, many, many languages. Um, so this is a bit of a video. So you'll see that's that's why it's actioning uh, that way. Um, and then the slide will slit will move over to the next one. 
So um, as you can see, Targimli has a plugin for agencies to plug in, meaning that they can sign up. The people who need assistance can app on with their app on does does a bridge with the software, machine learning software, to enable these aid workers, what whoever they happen to be, um, and people around the world willing to volunteer their time to help as well as those groups or those people in you know it's a uh, like app uh, which enables right time just in time uh, just fit uh, types of um, as far as organizations are concerned like cares that will allow um, Small groups um, to join up and have their network of volunteers. Uh, anyone who wants to help in this regard, sign up for the so that if then um, what ends up happening is that there is the possibility of, of garnering statistics and data regarding how much is uh, uh, good is coming out of this use. And uh, it, it provides in the form of a dashboard for the this for the organization itself. So for example, in our case, if our discussion group were to sign up, uh, not just you know our comms across cultures group um, but if the whole discussion group then what we're able to do is leverage within our own networks the possibility of having other, um, people within our networks who speak more than one language be available um, for <laughs> very little time investment um, it's as simple as downloading the app and then waiting for a call for someone who speaks your language. So um, I'm just gonna switch over to the, um, this is, uh, doesn't allow me to actually go to the, the actual pages. I'm just going to go over to that um, presentation that I have that is the same one, but has the links. We have so, one there, Paula. Okay, all right, so let's, let's just go to the second slide then. So I'm gonna click on this link so that you can see where it goes. Now, can everybody see that it's changing the page? Can everybody see where it says Targimli Cares? Yes. Okay, perfect. So basically, this is the actual umbrella uh, program for organizations that would not allow organizations to participate. And what they have are these invitation links, like I've indicated. You'll notice that Comcast and Dubai Cares and Apple and Hewlett Packard Enterprise and Google have all signed up. Um, you'll also notice that we have a little link here too. Now that's just, that's not a working link. <laughs> um, the executive director was very enthusiastic about our joining forces, so um, he already created that for us. But whether or not we adopt it is certainly up to the the group consensus. So that then allows us to be able to find information reports um, and it also allows us to have some, some feedback in terms of how are scaling it through our own networks as an organization um, can help the greater good. So um, I'm just going to quickly go targim.ly is the website and it has all sorts of stories and data. You'll notice the data right here. You'll notice how many beneficiaries and how many translators have already signed up. And the average wait time to get a translator to help someone in need across the world 
with a language that you're able to help with whatever language it happens to be. And you don't have to be formal translator. You just need to be able to communicate in that language. So right now it's 32 languages. It's very, very interesting. Thank you, Paula. And this is something we can contribute straight away. Yeah? It doesn't... Yep. It's, it's done. And so they're, they're still working on the software behind it. So I'm just, if, uh, does anybody have any questions about any of this before I, before I unshare the screen? I can go uh, to any part. Fabulous. This is Terry. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, uh -huh. Can we utilize this in, in, in our groups? Are yeah. these uh, just uh, linguist translators, they're not fully employed translators. No, these are all, vol all the people who sign up Wonderful. are people like you and me who know how to speak a language, any Excellent. language. Excellent. So, so for example, for Terry, if there was someone who was stranded in Turkey and you knew Turkish, but you also knew English, you obviously know English, um, and that English person, uh, speaking person, didn't know Turkish, but they use this to be able to get someone who speaks both Turkish and English and you agreed to help them, you could in that same time help them with their need. It's, it's all down to who's available at whatever time, that's yeah. what the machine language um, protocol uh, does. It matches according to the time zone and the, like the best time frame. So if you happen to have been at a, t uh, like in the morning where in the evening the person needs assistance and you, it's reasonable to expect that you might be up to receive a call, then it'll send a ping to your phone and you can either accept or not. It'll go to the, next, to the first available person who accepts it. It's super interesting and it's, it just gives me ideas, not just for translation, but it was yeah. talking about project management or PMO support. Yeah. For any assistance it's whatsoever. Yeah. It's for medical assistance. It's for, Basically, the translation is just simply the communication in a different language. Mm. So we use the term translation. It's not like official, or very precise. You have to have a degree in translation. No, this is basically to facilitate. It's a communication. Um, it's a means of communication, just like a telephone is a means of communication. Yeah. Except that what, what it allows you to do is connect to people who are expressing a need and you have signed up to a program that whereby you've agreed to provide assistance in that language. And you can either, in the moment that the request has come through, either accept or not accept, depending on your availability. You know, yeah. we're not always available, even, yeah. if, even if the time frame is correct, so. Thank um, you, Paula. Can you share this? Uh, well, I'll ask everybody to share this in the team site. Yep, I'll put it on the team site as well. And, um, but definitely a big step, this is really, um, yeah, straightforward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Anna. Thank you, the team. And let me move to the next one and last one, Fernando. And I'm helping Fernando on the project management part. So, in two minutes, Fernando, because we're running late, yeah. um, where Sorry. are we going to focus? Uh, good. Sorry, I, I didn't know how to stop yeah. the share. Thank you. <laughs> right. Yes, it's, everything is open. Okay. Hi, everybody. So the our group is just is focusing uh, how go, how we can help uh, the rest of the of the companies. Um, for example, uh, Ricardo uh, said that uh, just to make like a one help like a PMO. So our focus is now uh, how 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 we can connect with the PMO with with the companies that they need helps. Um, in which way, if we connected uh, one by one as like a mentor, we have a, every, every part of, of each team has one, like a mentor, or we work like a, like a whole team and we help us with many entries with, with, that, with that company. Unfortunately, I don't see Ricardo today. Maybe he's not connected. No, he could not join, he yeah, said. Yeah, he, he cannot join it. So this is our, our next step. How, how we, how, we can connect it with the, with the companies. Or if, if somebody can hand up the, the hands and say, hey, I have one company that it helps. So this is what, how, we, how we manage this, this is the, our next step. Yeah, we're starting to focus now. I think we have the focus now is the question is how and, and which way and so on. But there has been a lot of uh, turning around and I think now, like Fernando says, hmm. We, we want to focus on this specific area yeah. mm -hmm. projects and, and basically coaching for free. 
um, kind of more, maybe more specific with tools, but um, so thank you. Um, uh, I'm just very surprised, uh, pleased uh, with with the progress. It's just amazing. It's like you're working almost full time on this because the way you progress, and I know it's not the only thing. Can I ask you? Um, I don't think we have time here to discuss, but could you schedule a meeting um, and invite everybody? And don't don't care. You will never find the perfect time that fits to everybody. But um, I want to know more about all the six things that we talked today um, and have more time to discuss and, and give you feedback and, and, and learn from what you've learned so far. So could you each team schedule one hour this week if you can or the week after, invite everybody uh, because there's a lot of content already and ideas uh, that have been shared. Um, it's, it's so much wealth on, on links and, and ideas in the application from Paula. There is another quickly update from Golce. She shared with me something that the European Commission is launching in a few days. Golce, you want to share that um, quickly with the group? Um, sure, Antonio. Uh, in fact, let me quickly share my screen so you can all see whilst I'm talking. Um, I hope you can see right now. Mm -hmm. It's this EU versus virus initiative by European Union. Um, the agenda is as follows. You can participate as a mentor, as a project manager, as someone who'd like to build a team or who'd like to be a part of a project team. Um, so during, um, from 20th till 23rd of April, there is onboarding and team building. So you can be part of any team or ideas if you want to, or you can simply register as a mentor. Um, and then there, there's going to be a hackathon between 24th till 26th of April. Um, and then there'll be results. So, I mean, um, you know, it's a quick thing, I know, and there may not be um, greatest ideas, but then you never know. So, um, and you can simply register as a mentor as well if um, you know um, if you feel like it. So I thought it's worth a share. Um, and yeah. the ideas, um, the the business areas that they're looking to find um, solutions for are health and life, business continuity, social and political cohesion, remote working and education. For example, I think um, Emma's Emma Ruth, I think, um, was working. Um, on that particular group. So maybe there are ideas there that can, can be implemented, especially for this track, digital finance and, and other um, ideas. So This is what I like when she's, the goal she shared this, I said, the topics are so broad that mm -hmm. we, it's not just healthcare or medical devices or ventilators or masks, but they're looking at the bigger picture, the bigger impact. So uh, I don't know if we have to, for two days to spend there watching, but I, we might pick up some ideas. I will join for sure. Uh, so we'll put that goal if that's okay with you on the, or we'll share that in the team site and maybe with the note following here. Sure. Good, Jay, I have a question. Um, is this uh, only for the EU or is this uh, open to anyone in the world? This is open to anyone in the world. Uh, the, oh. you know, the organizers are the, basically the EU Commission, mm -hmm. um, and they will also be the ones rewarding in the end, um, but open to anybody. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That's sure. a nice part. And I want to share last, the last thought that I, um, we don't have time again to discuss, but I, we could have some of these sessions. So one will be updated, some others will bring some thought leaders, and, and Deepa Prala uh, want to, she will come next Wednesday most likely, She's the mm -hmm. daughter of CJ, CK Parra, one of the, mm -hmm. like Peter Drucker, is yeah. very amazing to hear, uh, especially from the social angle. Uh, but I thought we could have this group brainstorming and networking hub where somebody that you know in your town has a problem, has a shop or is the ice cream maker and we'll bring them here, say in 10 minutes, share your problem, we break out in rooms, and we start to help these people concretely on, on solutions, on rethinking their business model, 
or maybe connecting. I know this person here and there. They're doing mm -hmm. the same uh, and eventually raising some funds if there's a need. Or So I thought this could be a nice learning opportunity for us and, and having the experience on helping one person. Um, I just a thought, put your thinking in, in team side, but it just, I think we're experiment all with this situation. So I thought let's experiment with this one too. Why not? If you know somebody that's struggling today and could benefit from brilliant 40, 50 people here from all over the world to have that discussion and all working together for that person, please let me know. Um, and we'll bring, invite them. The only thing is the language. They need to be able to speak English uh, for the time being. But that was just, as we progress, kind of the thinking that I'd like to share with you. But sorry if there's no more time. It just passed by this hour so quickly. But if you could do that, please invite us to your session mm -hmm. and we can go a bit deeper on all these fascinating topics. Um, please share your feedback or any comments on today in the team side. Okay. Um, then we can have a bit more dialogue. Sorry if you could not speak. Marcello, I see you're yes. raising yes. the hand. Yeah, if you want to say something. Just a really last minute question, but it may be applicable for everybody. It would be great, I think, for all to have an expert that help, that knows how to get ideas from idea generations to concreteness, right? I'm sure there are people in these sectors, that's what they do as a job. They help people going from ideation to something concrete. And it feels like we as a larger group could benefit because we all have great ideas, but then maybe we lack a process or a framework to make them concrete. So I just wanted to throw it out there. Maybe if, you, if we know somebody in that space, it could actually help us. Okay, good point. Anything else? Thank you uh, for your time. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you this was all. a great meeting. Wow. Wow, so much done. Thank you. Keep well, please. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.